All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, Wendy Fry here, directly director of family and caregiver engagement, and I'm joined today by Morgan Turpin. She is one of our West Coast Parent Ambassadors and a Dravet mom. So Morgan's here today to share a little bit about her story, her family story with Dravet syndrome. And um, so yeah, Morgan, can you tell us a little bit about um, yourself? Tell us where you live and all the fun basics and then give us a little background about your, you know, history with Dravet. Sure. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, I am Morgan, as mentioned, and uh, I live in San Diego with my husband, Sean, and our two kids, Shane and Taylor. Uh, Taylor's four, and Shane is seven, and Shane has Dravet syndrome. His first seizure was at seven months to the day, and as I'm sure many people can relate to, we were told that first seizure that he probably would never have another one. It was just a febrile seizure, very common. Um, we definitely knew, like a lot of people, I'm sure, that in our gut that it would probably happen again. And sure enough, three days later, he had his second one. And that sort of began our crazy journey into this world. Um, when he was 13 months old, he was diagnosed via genetics with a de novo SCN1A mutation, a nonsense mutation. And that's sort of an interesting part of our story because I actually work in genetics and I did for several years before we ever had Shane. So that's been a really uh, blessing, I feel like, to have that knowledge and understanding of the complexity of the genetic component um, before this huge surprise of Gervais syndrome fell into our laps. Um, I still work for the company who ran his testing. So um, that's kind of a crazy piece of our story. He was not actually diagnosed with Gervais until he was two years old. Uh, the first couple neurologists that we saw, they felt like he didn't totally fit the bill. So it took until our, I think it was our third neurologist who finally was like, yes, he definitely has Gervais syndrome. Um, I connected with the Gervais syndrome foundation actually at a different event that's in SoCal that's Epilepsy Awareness Day at Disneyland and DSF comes every year and they have a booth and I went up to them and I talked to a couple of the moms working the booth and I just remember that was a really like enlightening experience um, in our very early in our Dravet days um, to talk to somebody else and understand that we weren't alone and that it was just crazy the amount of similarities that we had in our stories and that was very, very helpful uh, to me as a new mom who was, you know, trying to navigate this world. Um, I joined the Facebook group a little bit later. And then last year, I became a parent ambassador for DSF for the West Coast region. Um, sorry, I lost my place. Um, it's okay. I, I've been to a couple conferences. I've been to two Day of Gervais. I actually have not been to a big conference yet. We got connected with DSF right after Miami, and then we were not able to attend Colorado. So 2020 is going to be our first big conference in Texas, and we are so excited from all the posts I've seen from people. It seems like an amazing experience, and we can't wait for that educationally and also, I think, soul-fulfilling. It sounds like a really awesome experience to connect with other parents. Um, we really support DSF's mission of Hope Through Research. We think that you know, my husband is also a scientist. So both of us being scientists, understanding the value of research, but also being parents and understanding how uh, much this disorder entails and how we really need a cure. And we believe that research is going to get us to that cure. And we're very hopeful that it will happen within his lifetime. So a little bit about Shane. He is seven He's going into second grade, which is insanely hard to believe <laughs> now. It goes by fast and slow at the same time somehow, but <laughs> he yeah. attends public school. He's in a moderate to severe special needs class, and his one-to-one -one nurse, Paula, and also his service dog, Bridget, uh, accompany him at school. Um, he does have several developmental delays. He also has an autism diagnosis, um, and his seizure control is not great. We have really struggled the last few years. We've tried 
diet therapy. We've tried uh, medications. He's been in a clinical trial for two years. He got a vagal nerve stimulator implanted. We've tried newly FDA approved medication. The list just goes on and on. And unfortunately, we really have not gotten to a very solid place with his seizure control. So I think even more than ever, we really understand how Gervais is a lot more than seizures, but also how we really need a cure. So that's kind of our little story there. Thank you so much for sharing. I know it's not easy for everyone to share their story in a short period of time because our stories are so complex and involved. Um, We've got quite a few people on the line, so I think everybody's joining. Got lots of highs um, from our community friends. Um, So I'm curious to know if... and. So let's start with advice for someone who's newly diagnosed. So we have lots of families who are new to our organization. They are just receiving a diagnosis or just getting connected with us. What would you say to them um, as they're joining the community? What advice would you give them as a newly diagnosed family? I would say um, definitely try to go to the conferences if you're able to. It's an amazing way to connect with other families. And if you go to the Day of Gervais conference, if you're able, you'll more than likely meet some people who live in your area. And not everyone's on Facebook, I realize. So you might people you might meet people that, that aren't even, you know, that you're not connected to via social media. Um, stay really up on all of the social media stuff because it's really important to be aware of what's going on. That's how we found out about the trials in our area and, um, you know, just random information that we've gotten from parents has been insanely valuable. So I feel like the social media component has been really important to uh, finding research articles and just discussions among parents and, you know, things that you might think sound crazy. Chances are you'll find somebody else who's experienced the same thing. So just stay connected and understand that you're not alone. There's unfortunately lots of us out here in this club, but um, just connect to other parents We're we're happy to talk you through and we're all kind of at different stages in this journey and it does evolve as it goes along. So I think that's pretty much the best advice I can yeah. give. <laughs> Stay connected. I think that's true and so important for everyone, you know, no matter where you are in your journey, no matter how old or how young your, your child is when they get diagnosed, um, you know, it's really important to stay connected and be in touch. Um, and just as a reminder, so we're here, we're live. So everyone who's watching, if you have questions for Morgan, um, I know she's happy to answer them. So if you go ahead and drop them in the comments, if you do. Um, so another question I have for you, what is the most challenging part of the, your journey with Gervais syndrome? And then what is the most rewarding part of the journey with Gervais syndrome? And I know those are loaded (laughs) questions. So if it's not, if you think later and you're like, oh, it was different, just, you know, for someone who doesn't know anything about Dravet syndrome, if they're like, why is this so bad? Why is it so challenging? What would you tell them? I think, honestly, the hardest part for me personally, and I'm sure other people can relate, is that you can't plan for anything. That's been really hard. I'm a type A person. I like to have plans A, B, C, D, E. Um, I I always had a vision for how everything was going to go. And Gervais just kind of slapped me in the face. Like Gervais was a huge wake up call. And it's the biggest thing I've learned over the seven years of dealing with it is that it's always changing. And that's hard. Mm -hmm. That's really hard. And I remember parents of older individuals with Gervais telling me that it doesn't get easier as time goes on. And honestly, I think that that's true. It it gets different. It's different challenges and you have to constantly stay on top of your game and you're constantly learning new things. And I think in the earlier years, I thought there might be a time when we just kind of had it figured out and it would be smooth sailing, but I'm learning that that's not true. (laughs) So I'm learning that too. Yeah, I can relate to that. (laughs) It's one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've said this to my husband before. It's like, we can think about a, a year or a decade's worth of problems, but honestly, we really should just focus on what is the most immediate thing that we can take care of today. And and that's okay. You know, you can worry about the rest of it 
later on, but just take it day by day. And like I said, stay connected and um, reach out to other people. The most rewarding part, I would say, is just the community that of people that I never would have ever connected with from all over the country, some even all over the world. I mean, it's like I said earlier, it's a club that nobody wants to be in. But just the fact that we have the DSF and, and working in genetics, we work with a lot of rare disorders. And honestly, I I hate to say this, but we're actually really lucky that we have this community of people and we have connections to so many people whose child has the same syndrome. So um, just the beauty in meeting these other people who are like-minded and passionate and who children are, you know, just equally as special. I start to feel like each one of those kids is my own. I would say that that is definitely the most rewarding part. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Again, I know those were majorly loaded questions. So <laughs> a few things have come through. One thing I want to ask um, someone, Shauna, um, asked, what's the best way extended family members can support your family, your Dravet family? So I think that's a great question. Um, and I know you're really close with your your family and they're very involved. So what recommendations do you have for aunts, uncles, grandparents, neighbors? How can they help when you need help? I think the best way is honestly to just offer to do things. Don't, instead of just saying, you know, we're always here, just say, hey, let me take care of that for you. Or let me just do that. Just even if it's something as minor as, you know, we need to run to the store and grab milk, but we can't because he's seizing and we've got to take his sister to ballet or something like that. Just offering to, or, hey, let us bring you a meal. I know that you've had a, a really rough week or something. I think any, no matter how small it is, I think a lot of us have a really hard time asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate the offers, but a lot of times we're not going to go and actually pursue that. So I think that's been the best thing that people have. And we've been really, really fortunate to have a really big support network is when people just say, let me do that for you. And then we just step back and we say, okay. And then, you know, just one little thing Mm -hmm. falls off your list can make a world of difference. That's great advice. I think, you know, I agree with that from myself. Like that is so true. Um, <clears throat> okay. So somebody, uh, Lola's asked, um, about <clears throat> public schools and immunizations. What, so can you share if you're comfortable, your experience sure. with immunizations and how you've approached it? Sure. So we are in California, which does have pretty strict regulation. Um, Fortunately, Shane is actually up to date on all of his immunizations. Uh, surprisingly, he never had issues with them until the very last set. So we got kind of lucky because he has a big break now. So as far as, you know, everything's concerned, he is okay to attend public school. Um, but it definitely is going to be a conversation when the next round comes up because the last one was a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. A lot of our kids, you know, that is a tricky one and parents are always concerned and I know doctors always say immunize when you can. So, um, right. you know, it's hard to, to know what the right choice is. And, um, Erin is, been... oh, Aaron is singing your praises. Gonna... No, you go oh. ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, we've been really lucky to have a really, really supportive doctor who under a pediatrician who understands both sides of it. And she talks through everything with us, no matter how long it takes. And I think that goes a long way. And she hears us and she's willing to have a dialogue about it. So we don't worry as much as long as we have her. <laughs> That's good to know. And I think it's good that sings to the tune of having a really um, cohesive and um, understanding and knowledgeable medical team not just your neurologist, but everybody involved. It's really important to have a good care team for your, for your child. So um, I think that's great advice. Um, as I was saying, Aaron is singing your praises. Morgan, Hi, <laughs> Morgan also writes for The Mighty, which is a special needs um, blog site. Uh, she writes about epilepsy and Gervais, and she's a wonderful writer. Um, you do Thank lots you. of other things. What are some of the other things you do for our community? Remind me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I've written, I've written for The Mighty. I've also written for uh, a couple of other um, different epilepsy pieces. Um, 
I was involved with Ovid, who is doing one of the clinical trials that's out there for a patient advocacy program that they had um, that was pretty active last year. They picked a couple rare disorders, and Gervais was one of them. And they wanted to get the word out there about some challenges associated with Gervais. Um, my work actually attends a lot of the conferences. So sometimes I get to attend on that side and sometimes I get to attend on the patient side and I get to just go, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> I'm here with the kid with the Gervais. Um, we also are very active with the Epilepsy Awareness Day at Disneyland events. Um, that one is not Gervais specific, it's epilepsy in general, but we have a very largely growing Gervais group that is getting bigger every year and we organize a meetup um, on the Disneyland day where we all get together, we take a picture. The last couple of years, a character has come and joined in our picture. So that's been really special. And we just all kind of talk and hug and, you know, mingle for a little bit before we go about uh, Disneyland day. So definitely check that one out too. <laughs> What's the date for that this year? It's November 4th, I want to say. It's okay. on a Wednesday. So Wednesday. it's that very first week in November. November. Okay. Um, so the 4th and the 5th is the Education Expo, and DSF is always there. They always have a booth. And then um, on Wednesday is the actual day in the park at okay. Disneyland. That's awesome. And then Day of Gervais is in Los Angeles on the West Coast this Yay. year. Um, and that is September 14th, right? Yes. Okay. We are so, so excited for that. We're bringing the whole family this time. Yay! So it's going to be really exciting. I'll be there. <laughs> and a bunch Yay! of all of our other ambassadors will be there. It'll be a great time. So, um, all right. And then we're, we're running over on time. So uh, Jenny says, love everything you do for our community, Morgan. Oh, thanks, um, Jenny. And I echo that. You are such a great advocate and super mom for our community. I just have one last question for you. What's something that you enjoy doing for yourself? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one. Actually, okay, I love true crime. And I've, I I see Erin out there. She's smiling. I've connected with a couple of other Gervais moms. Um, so I love, I, I actually have a little bit of a commute for work, but I don't mind it because I'm in the car <laughs> by myself. I put on my true crime podcast or uh, audiobook, and that is definitely something I enjoy. That's People don't always understand, but it's actually a little bit of a mental break for me. Mm -hmm. It's something not at all related to Gervais, and it's something that I just get a little, you know, mental break and something different to think about. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you. And I think that's important, too, for everyone to remember. I know it's so hard in this life, in the daily grind, to remember to take time for yourself. So I think that's great that you have that to, to do. And I hope other families and moms and dads out there can relate to that and find some time for themselves as well, even if it's your commute, yes. which most people hate. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a parent, that's that's different. I so. know. Most people are like, <laughs> but self-care <laughs> is not selfish. Whatever no. way you need to get it, you get it done. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Morgan. Is there anything else you want to share with the community before we go? No, thank you so much for having me. And um, hi to everybody out there who said hi back. And I look forward to seeing some of you at Day of Gervais and hopefully a lot more of you in Texas in 2020. Yay. Okay. Well, thank you, Morgan. I Thanks. will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.